I wanted to chat about representation. Now, this is an age-old discussion in things like media and fiction, but it's an important discussion that needs to be remembered and reiterated every few years, and there's a number of reasons for that. As times change, some things become more accepted and others become more scrutinised, and this is normal as society progresses. It can be difficult for some people to adjust to this, as when something works for them, why would they want it to change? It can be difficult to understand that even though something works for you, there are ways to make it work even better and for more people, especially if this specific method has been in practice for a long time. This can be why your grandparents have a hard time adjusting to change compared to your smaller cousin, for example. And this is where representation comes in. Before we carry on, I'd like to ask all of you watching to please like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell if you enjoy my content. Apparently saying this at the start of the video puts you on good terms with the algorithm. If you have any knowledge about that, then please feel free to comment about it, or just comment in general. That helps too. Alright, shameless plug out of the way, let's do our best to break this down. For some of us who don't fit this strange mould of normality, a lot of us don't have the same amount of stories or characters that cater to us within the entertainment industry, and pretty much every other industry, but it feels particularly obvious in entertainment. Because of this preconceived mould, large companies, networks, and studios will accommodate it more readily because they know it will sell, whereas anything that falls outside of that category is branded as risky, experimental, or more frustratingly, controversial. We've all seen the same old Christmas films, which I think are the best example. Boy meets girl, they fall in love, they live happily ever after, these characters are also usually white, straight, cisgender, usually middle class or comfortably broke as I like to call it, and neurotypical. None of these things are bad, otherwise there wouldn't be so many of these same archetypes. But <laughs> they're just so boring. In case you couldn't tell, I really don't like Christmas films. Most of them don't have a great production quality, but still make a profit by banking on a holiday where, like, cliches and conventions are encouraged. I know that makes me sound like a Scrooge, but tell me I'm wrong. I'll wait. Entertainment in my mind is like a well-balanced diet. You need variety to stay healthy. Sure, you might have a comfort food that you go back to a lot, but eating that alone will make you sick. Or just very small-minded and bigoted. So let's get into what I mean about representation in entertainment. We spoke already about the imaginary mold, and the reason that it's in place. What are the people who don't fit supposed to do? Well, simply put, we do our best to expand that mould little by little. But unfortunately, it doesn't just stop at fiction. It is much more of a climb to be in positions or jobs that influence things like casting and story elements in real life. It's a real-world problem that extends to every industry it touches. There are some industries that cope with it better than others, like animation for example. Family-friendly networks tend to be more accepting towards themes of equality. Not only that, but the psychology of representation also plays a key role with this. When people see someone in a film who looks or acts like them, excelling in a real-world job or possesses certain qualities, it makes that person believe that they can do it too. After the film Legally Blonde came out, Reese Witherspoon mentioned in an interview that at least one woman a week sent her a message saying that they went to law school because of Elle Woods. And that's the kind of power these roles have. That's why these roles for certain characters are important. If people don't see certain characters excelling in different jobs because a person of that group was not present in the production process to say that it's possible, people will in turn be less inclined to believe that it is possible. Fortunately, there are people willing to diversify their stories. However, as pure-hearted or well-intentioned these people might be, because they don't have the experiences that come with being part of a certain community, there's always that chance that they will misrepresent a certain aspect and cause a negative response. This is why people get very gatekeepy about who can draw or even do certain things. Because there is a history of individuals taking advantage of this well-intentioned persona and doing it in a way that gives the wrong impression to mainstream audiences, which then leads to ridicule at best and straight-up hate crimes at worst. On the subject of gatekeeping, this can also have its own subset of problems. Due to certain groups only having a small amount of representation in the mainstream world, people of that group can become very protective of what they have because there's so little of it. Think of it like money. Those with less income are more frugal and picky about what they spend it on. People in this situation are also more likely to ridicule someone who spends their money on something that they don't deem worthy, and it's a similar logic being applied. Some people can become so attached to characters who look or act like them, and project onto them so much, that it culminates in this need for them to be perfect, which obviously isn't possible, so any character that comes along who doesn't live up to that standard gets ignored, critiqued much more harshly than a non-minority character, or the one who created them gets mercilessly ripped into. It's quite scary, especially if it's one of the good Samaritans previously mentioned, and this is another reason why big companies will refuse to take risk on newer types of characters. 
Minority characters aren't just scrutinised by the opposition, their own people do it too. Albeit for different reasons, but all negative feedback will be treated the same. This also sends a really bad message to small creators, telling them that if they do the slightest thing wrong that people don't agree with, all their hard and honest work will just be disregarded and they will be ridiculed to the point where they don't want to try again. And then we'll be back to where we started, with no representation but one more person who thinks negatively of us, because a small but loud portion of us went on the offensive. And this is why I think we need to be kinder to people creating these stories as a whole. As unfortunate as it is, in a world run by revenue and engagement, we have to play the game, and that involves positive reinforcement through either money or feedback. From a Hollywood blockbuster to an independent webcomic, all creative projects rely on positive feedback to guide them on what people want to see more of. People harp on about this all the time, I understand that, and I feel that it's particularly obvious on this website as any other. I literally asked you to like and subscribe at the start of this video. If that isn't an indicator, I don't know what is. In entertainment scenes like comics and cartoons, we've seen an explosion of creators and stories pioneering this sentiment. Networks like Disney and Cartoon Network have brought not just some of the most varied casts of characters in recent years, but also opened up many avenues for alternate stories to be explored and appreciated within animation. Basically, you vote with your dollar, and if you want something, you have to either pay for it or make your own. Fortunately, there are a plethora of small and independent creators who are more than happy to fill in the gaps that larger companies won't. I'm gonna say as a side note, but comics are a bit of a mixed bag in this aspect, depending on what category you're looking at. In recent years, there's been an emergence of BL or boy love comics that people outside of gay communities would believe are done for the LGBT, but they're actually catered for straight women called for Joshis, which by the way is not a great word, and you definitely really shouldn't call yourself that. It's frustratingly obvious when you're part of the community yourself, but anyone who isn't won't fully understand the problem, and just screaming that it's wrong without taking the time to calmly explain will only make us more enemies. I'm not going to get further into this issue right now because honestly, I think it could encompass its own video. Not all BL comics are like this, but there's just too much that I would want to cover, and it veers too much into a tangent for this video. Essentially, if you want people like you to be seen, you need to support those trying to make it happen, especially if they're a minority. Help and encourage them so that they can keep climbing and get those opportunities, and then they'll be able to finally give you the representation you're craving. Yes, there are people who aren't minorities willing to help, but we can't always rely on them for everything. We need to help each other climb the mountain and not just expect someone who's already at the top to throw down a rope, because trust me, some of them don't want to. Thank you for watching. I know this was like a very broad topic to try and generalise, but I think I wanted to get the fundamentals down so that I have something to work from if I were to like expand from it in the future. That way I don't have to worry about cramming stuff into a super long video. I make these videos for fun and representation is something that I'm invested in, both as a gay woman and as someone who just wants to see more variety in entertainment in general. I get very bored when I see the same film, like rehashed in multiple ways, and I'm sure a lot of other people feel that way too. Again, please like and subscribe, and if you made it to the end, comment pineapple. It'll be interesting to see how many people got this far. Please stay safe everyone. Bye!